All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. We're going to go right into it. We're going we're gonna to cover the last chapter of 1 Thessalonians. How many have been enjoying these teachings in 1 Thessalonians? We're at the last chapter of 1 Thessalonians. And so let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you and thank you so much for the opportunity again to get into your word. And Lord, thank you for the things we've been learning from 1 Thessalonians. Thank you, Father, for your word that is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it's and, and it penetra penetrating our hearts. I pray that the Holy Spirit would penetrate your word in our hearts, Father God. Give us fresh revelation, illumination from your word through the Holy Spirit. And Father, give me utterance as I speak your word today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Last week we talked about from chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, about the day of the Lord. And we, we covered, we don't want to go back into there. We covered a lot about, we covered about the rapture. We're living in the days when the day of the Lord is about to appear. And, and uh, uh, but he ends this book. And remember what I told you, 1 Thessalonians is all about working. What do you do while you're waiting for the Lord's return? It's about working and waiting for the Lord's return. Amen. It's about working and waiting. What do you do while you're waiting? And how to, expecting the Lord to come soon. And Paul had them have that attitude way back then, almost 2,000 years ago. So I believe if he, if he had the church think that way back then, we should be thinking the similar way. We should be expecting Jesus to come very soon, any day. If you live your life with an expectancy for Jesus to come soon, it'll motivate you to live for Him. Amen? It'll motivate you. It, it, it seems kind of quiet without the youth not here. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's got real quiet. No. I, are you paying attention now? Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. A little bit quiet. But anyway, let's go on. Here, we're, we're now, he's going to end this book with various exhortations. And I titled this, Important Exhortations for New Believers. Listen, the book of First, First Thessalonians is a, actually one of the earliest books of the New Testament. I believe Paul wrote around A.D. 50 or about 20 years, about, you know, about, probably about 20 years after Jesus died and rose again, this book was written. Along with Galatians, it's one of the early, early books. So to me, I feel this is a vital book because why? It's, uh, to me, it was a young church. So he's talking to new believers how, you know, how, to, how to live while they're waiting for the Lord to come back. So, so some people, well, you shouldn't talk about end times and the Lord coming back to new believers. It, it'll go above their head. It's too much. Well, Paul's talking, Paul was talking to new believers here. And he's exhorting them about expecting the Lord's return. To always have an expectancy for the Lord to return. Amen. And so, notice, let's start reading now where we ended in verse 11. About comforting one another with the words of God about the day of the Lord. But then look at verse 12. So here's, here's the first one. In fact, look at, if you, those of you, everybody got your notes? Yes, yes. If you didn't raise your hand, ushers, make sure everybody got one that doesn't have one. Look at the top of your notes there. Paul ends the first letter to the Thessalonians with various important exhortations that new believers in the Lord can walk in by grace through faith. Remember, everything we do for the Lord should be a byproduct of the relationship we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. Love is always the motive and His love is flowing through us. Amen? Everything we do, everything we do should be what? By grace through faith. Amen? So, so when we talk about these exhortations, don't treat them as rules and regulations. It's, treat them as a byproduct of your relationship with God. Amen? So look at the first ones here. Verse 12 and 13. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who what? labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Amen. Be at peace among yourselves. Now, let me go there here too because I want to I I put this in the Amplified Bible. If you can go ahead and put that in the Amplified Bible for me. 1 Thessalonians 5 13 Oh, next one here. Oh, I'm sorry, back one. So, but look at this verse. Uh, you got that in the Amplified? Notice. Now, also we beseech you, brethren, get to know those who labor among you and recognize them for what they are. 
recognize them for what they are. So notice the first thing I put there, how to treat leaders. First thing you can do is just like anybody else, recognize them. <laughs> Amen? Recognize those who labor among you. Amen? Again, that's a form. Remember I was teaching, I was teaching our, our, our grace team, you know, our, our workers in our church about just greeting one another. How important it is just to greet one another. If you don't say hi and greet one another, it, it kind of shows like, you know, it, it, like you're not valuing them. Amen. Amen. So it's so important that you what? That you respect. And, and a way to do it is just greeting one another. And so as leaders, Paul is saying, man, recognize those who labor among you. In fact, that word labor though, it, it actually means in some translations that those that are really hard, hard they're working hard. And they kind of look a little bit weary. <laughs> they're working, you can tell they're working for the Lord. They're working hard. He says, but, but of course we know that we, we rest in the Lord. We don't have to struggle. Our burden is light. Yes. Amen. But how many know things can be tough? But, but it's still the attitude of how you serve. Amen. Amen. And so he says, recognize them. Notice, among them, recognize them for what they are. Acknowledge and appreciate and respect them, right? So that's, that's, that's another way to say esteem them. Amen? That's the other point I have on your, on your notes there. Esteem them, amen? And rec notice, recognize them and for who they are, your leaders who are over you in the Lord, and those who warn you and kindly reprove and exhort you. Notice, kindly reprove and exhort you. Amen? How many know a leader can t speak the truth and speak the truth in love? Amen? amen? Right? And, and that's important. Now go to, go, to, go to verse 13. Put that in the Amplified for me. So, oh, okay. Is this the Amplified? Oh, is this this? Okay. All right. And cool. That way I don't have to, have to turn. Now, <laughs> now the only thing, okay. Now, now do I have to push the button to, to go to Amplified or what? You know what I'm saying? Because I have my Bible. And so, <laughs> I don't know what you guys are trying to do. But anyway, but anyway, go ahead and put the, put the Amplified on verse 13. Can you do that? It's up there? Okay, so I have to do it here. Then I got my own phone here. So I'll just, I'll just go with my own phone. I got my phone. I got my phone. I'm cool. Here it is. So notice 13. And hold them in very high and most affectionate esteem in intelligent and sympathetic appreciation of their work be at peace among yourselves. So note, in other words, again, that's just a way to hold, hold them up in esteem appreciating what they do for the Lord. Amen? So anybody who works for the Lord, it's just not pastors but leaders, amen, we're to esteem them. But then notice the last part, be at peace with others for their sake. So if you want to be a blessing to your leader, you know, be done with the drama. Be at peace. <laughs> Get along with each other. Be at peace with, with one another. And that will be a blessing to your leader. Amen? In fact, the, the TPT, if you want to throw that verse uh, uh, third, 12 and 13 in the TPT, look at how it says it. Dear brothers and sisters, make sure that you show your deep appreciation for those who cherish you and diligently work as your ministers among you. Notice. For they are your leaders who care for you, teach you, and stand before the Lord on your behalf. Next part. They value you with great love. Because of their service to you, let peace reign among yourselves. Yeah. So he's saying, man, let there be peace among yourselves. Why? Because of their service to you. Amen? Amen? Why? Because that, you know, as a leader, you want to see the people get along. You want to see people. A amen? Why? So he can focus on continuing ministering to you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So it's important that we be at peace among each other and so forth. Now, let's move on to verse 14. Look at this. Verse 14 says this. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, uh-oh, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. <laughs> right? <laughs> now this is a good one, people. You ready for this? All right. Let's go to the Amplified on this one. Notice, verse 14. And we earnestly beseech you, brethren, admonish, notice, admonish, warn, and seriously advise those who are out of line. And that's why in your notes I put there the LDUs. What is that? 
the loafers, the disorderly, and the unruly, the LDUs, that's why I put that. Amen? The loafers, the disorderly, and the unruly. Amen? He says, warn. Now, again, not in a mean way. Speak the truth in love. Amen? And so he's talking to, to new, in a way, new believers, right? But he says, encourage them, you know, warn them that, you know, if they're out of line because, you know, they, it's leading them to something where they shouldn't be going. And so, and so it, it, you know, and then look at the next one. Comfort the, what? The faint-hearted, right? Amen? Comfort the faint-hearted. Now, in the Amplified it says, uh, encourage the timid and the faint-hearted. Amen? Encourage the timid and the faint-hearted are people that, again, they're, they're, you know, they could be weary from their life, what they're going through their life. It's, it, things are going in life. And faint means they're going to give up. So he says, you want to you know, comfort them. Comfort them, encourage them. Uh, like the, versus the individual that's going through that situation, they need comfort. How, how, how many know if you're going through something like that, Amen. it would be easy for you to give up? Amen? So they need comfort. They need the comfort of the Spirit of God when they're going through tough times like that. And then, and so, and notice the next one. So comfort the faint-hearted. The next one is uphold the weak. Uphold the weak. Amplified says, help and give your support to the weak souls. Come on now. Help and give what? Your support to the weak. So again, support means, you know, when you're, if, if, if there's something that's standing up here and it needs support or a person and they're, they're, they're lean, you come next to them and you what, support them so they won't fall over. Amen? So they won't fall over. So that's what it means to support the weak. You come alongside to help them. Amen? That's what Galatians talks about. You know, if, if a brother or sister falls or, and, and so forth, you're, you're supposed to help bear their burden. That's right. Amen? Amen? Even though the Bible says everybody's supposed to carry their own load. Yet he says when somebody's hurting that bad, they need somebody to come along and help them carry their load on a temporary base until they get back on their feet. Because everybody's still called to carry their own load. But sometimes people need you to come alongside and help you know, support them during their time of need. And that's what the church is about. Amen. That's what the church is about. And then notice the next one here. And then the next one here we see is be patient with all. That's a big one. Be patient with all. Amplified says, and be very patient with everybody. Always keeping your temper. Right? How many know what happens when you get impatient? Right? When you're driving down the road and that, that lady with the... Never mind is driving 25 miles per hour at a 45. <laughs> right? Amen? Or that speedy guy is, you know, is your own cutting in front of you and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> Amen? Amen? You give him the hallelujah sign? Right? You give him the hallelujah sign. Amen? Amen? Not like that lady that had that bumper sticker that said, honk if you, you know, love the Lord. And, and, and she said, everybody's honking at me. They must really love the Lord. No, lady, it wasn't because of... <laughs> and then she asked her son, what, what's that sign that they're giving me? Oh, it's a Hawaiian sign, Grandma. And so she gave the sign back to them. Oh, to you. And she takes off with the lights green and then it turns red on them. <laughs> Look, they're all waving at me. She said, Oh my God. Right? Let's go through, let's move on. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. That's a good one. Amen. So notice in your notes there, pursue what is good for you and what? And for all. Let's look at it in the Amplified Bible. In the Amplified it says, see that none of you repays another with evil for evil. See, if somebody hurts you, that doesn't mean they need to hurt back. Come on now. It's a sign of maturity. When you can, when you can love somebody who's hurt you. 
Amen? Amen. It's a sign that you're growing up when somebody's hurting you and you still love them. Amen. People, that's what Jesus did for us. Yeah. We hurt him. Yes. We hurt him. We sent him to the cross. Yet he still loves us. Amen. So we're not supposed to return evil for evil. Well, I'm going to get back at him. Look what they did to me. Right. Well, that's, you know. How about what if God did that, thought that way about us? Amen. Remember Jonah? Jonah, listen, I'm going to tell you something. As I, you know, we were going through the Old Testament last week. And Jonah, the reason he, went, he fled to, to Tarshish is because he didn't want the Nineveh to repent. No. I mean, I mean he, didn't want, he didn't want God to show grace on them. He didn't want them to show grace. He wanted, he wanted fire to come down and burn them up. Now listen though. Before you judge Jonah, I read that some of the stuff that the Assyrians had done was evil, where they would impale somebody, tie their hands or whatever, and cut them alive down the middle. Do you think they deserve grace? But in the natural, I mean, you think they deserve the grace of God? No. No. So, some of the, so I can see why Jonah was like, get them, Lord. I don't want to show grace to them. They're evil. They're wicked people. They're, and he knew that they had been attacking Israel and so forth and so on. So Jonah, but, but then, but then uh, 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 again, God had been gracious to the children of Israel. You know what they were doing? They were sacrificing their kids to their gods, yeah. to Baal. They were doing Baal worship, giving up their babies to an idol that had a big oven in the middle and like this and they place the baby and the baby goes alive in the fire sacrificing thinking that they're going to be blessed in their land and prosper they did wicked things Amen. Yes, they did. the bottom line is that and, and so and so God and so Jonah gets so mad at God he's mad I knew it I knew you're a God that is gracious and loving kindness and compassion I knew as soon as these people repent a little bit you're not going to Destroy them. Because you're going to start a program of forgiveness, the message says. As soon as they repent. So what's the bottom line? If we all got what we deserved, we'd all be in hell. So don't give, e people might hurt you, but don't return evil for evil. Because that's how God's been with you. He didn't return evil for evil. Amen? And that's what he says, look at this. Not returning evil for evil. Amen. Now, can you put this uh, in the message, verse 13 through 15, in the message for me? And let's see if I have it here. I think I do. I think I do. I think. Yes, I do. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on. <laughs> Gently encourage the stragglers and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person, attentive to individual needs. Notice, attentive to individual needs. Be careful, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. Right? Look for the best in each other, and always do your best to bring it out. Isn't that good? Amen. That, that is good. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. So, so, so we talked about how to treat leaders. How to treat others. Now this is a good one. Let's talk about the five Beatitudes for new believers. <laughs> I want to call these the five. You know, Jesus gave us Beatitudes, but here's, I think Paul has given us some Beatitudes. See, you already be. You be righteous. You be holy. <laughs> right? You already be. You already are. So you just be what you are. So here's some B attitudes for new believers the first one here in verse 16 look at it rejoice sometimes is that what the Bible says no it says rejoice always come on now rejoice what always amen always can you put that in the NLT for me rejoice always in fact let me just put this in here because I'm gonna go into there because I have it here to myself. Re always be joyful, right? Always be joyful. And so notice, rejoice always. But pastor, how can I do that? Look, in fact, look at Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Notice what it says here. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, he says it twice, rejoice. 
rejoice. You know that word rejoice is where you get the word kario, ekeris, where you get the word grace. And really thanks is, the, actually we're going to get to it in a little bit, thanksgiving comes from that word. So it, it, it all goes back to the grace of God that you can rejoice. Because why? In spite of what you're going through, you can rejoice no matter the situation, no matter what you're facing. In fact, look at 2 Corinthians 6.10. Here's a great example, the Apostle Paul. Notice how he rejoiced. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. Notice, as sorrowful. Notice, he says, and I, I'm kind of sad, one translation said. I'm, I'm sad, yet what? Always rejoicing. That doesn't make sense. In other words, it means he's showing that you can be sad because you're going through a tough time, but yet, he says, you can still have an attitude of rejoicing. Come on now. In the midst of your sorrow, you can still have a rejoicing attitude. Amen. Come on now. See, see, this is very important. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Listen, even if you feel you're, you're poor right now, yet making many rich. Amen. <laughs> even as, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Are you seen as attitude? You have to see yourself already blessed. You have to see yourself already victorious. You have to see yourself already righteous and holy. Because you are. And as you do, it will change your attitude. And you'll begin to rejoice always. And we used to sing an old song. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. 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 Again I say rejoice. 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 Amen. We had some, we had some crazy songs back then, huh? They were uppity. They were uppity songs. <laughs> How could you not rejoice after singing that song? Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Right? <laughs> How could you not? By the time you're, what, you're getting in your brain, rejoice in the Lord always again. It's like the song that never ends. Right? And so, rejoice always. And, and then, now notice... Now notice, this, some people ask me, Pastor, what's God's will for me? I want to know God's will for me. This is God's will for you. In fact, this section, in fact, let me read it all and we're going to back up. Verse 17, rejoice always. Verse, uh, uh, verse 17, pray without what? Ceasing. In everything give what? Thanks. Listen, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Have you ever wondered, man, I really wish I had a specific word from God? Here it is. Very specific. Amen? Rejoice what? Always. Notice the next one. What's the next one? So, so I put it in your notes there. Be prayerful. Amen? I, mean, I mean, be joyful. And the next one, be prayerful. So these are the Beatitudes. Be joyful, be prayerful. In fact, I want you to put verse 17 in the uh, TPT version for me. Look at verse 17. Make your life a prayer. I like Amen. that. Amen. Some people think, some people think that, you know, how could I pray at all, at, all, at, all, at all times? You make your life a prayer. Amen. In the midst of maybe going through something, Father, I just want to thank you that you're working this out. Yes. Amen. In the midst of somebody cutting you off, Father, thank you for blessing that person. May they have a great day. <laughs> in the midst, you know what I'm saying? You can make your life a prayer where you're continuing. In other words, you know what it is? Continually speaking with your father. Yeah. Continually talking with him and, and just sharing your day with him. Because Listen, I, know, I don't know about you, but if I just told my wife, listen, I just have an hour with you today. This is our hour of talking time together. Honey, just you and me, one hour. And after that one hour, I... Don't talk to her. Don't spend time with her. How many know my wife would not be happy? Right? That's how we've treated prayer sometimes. Like, it's our time. Okay, I got my half hour of prayer. So we spend our half hour with God in prayer, whatever. You know what I'm saying? After that, okay, God, I'm too busy. I got a lot of work to do. See you the next day. Do that with your wife. See what happens. Right? You know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Why do we do that? 
why don't we, it would be better that you spend five minutes and, hey, Father God, how are you doing this morning? I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me another day. Thank you that this is going to be an awesome day, Lord. I appreciate you. Thank you that you daily load me up with benefits. You said in your word, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, Psalm 103. So, Lord, I bless you this morning that I'm blessed going in, going out. I thank you that you, you've forgiven me from all iniquity, healed me from all disease, redeemed my life from destruction. And yes, and I got to get going to work, but Lord, go with me. Yes. Amen. And as you're driving down the road, all of a sudden you start praying in the Spirit or whatever God leads you. Amen, amen. Just be careful when you pray in the Spirit, like I told you, because uh, when I pray in the Spirit, my, I go a little bit faster. <laughs> you know. And, and, and so when I was praying, I, I remember when I first got saved, I would be going down Grand Avenue. And <laughs> Slow down a little bit. Okay, calm down. Then I get into it again. And <laughs> I go real fast. It's just like the energy was flowing through me and I forget it. And don't close your eyes while you're praying in the Spirit and driving. Sometimes you get in the Spirit, you know, and you start, uh, you're driving by faith. <laughs> it's dangerous. You might see Jesus. <laughs> then you, you might close your eyes and wake up and, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you got in a crash, son. You gotta be careful. But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Be prayerful. Amen. You can. It's not a don't get into legalism. It might be five minutes in the morning. You, you're busy. My wife, she'll she'll do it while she's in the shower or putting on her makeup. She's, you know, worshiping the Lord or thanking the Lord or, or hearing her, her word and whatever. She doesn't you know what I'm saying. I more I'm, I'm more of a walker, so I like to walk and pray. That's me, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I like to walk and pray and, and, and so forth. So be, have a prayerful life, amen? In fact, look at Ephesians 6, 18. Throw that up there for me. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Notice what the Bible says here. Praying always, listen, after you put on your, you know, about talking about the armor of God that you have, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Come on now. Prayer and supplication. Supplication is heartfelt prayer requests to the Lord. Listen, in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Being watchful. In other words, it's almost like being watchful is like, take a look at what's going on around you. Amen. You might need to pray for your fellow employee going through something. Maybe somebody's Amen. thinking about suicide. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's been times when I've talked about this here in the church and it's ministered to some people who were thinking of it. Thank God. Thank God. Or if you're watching, don't you dare do it. Amen? You have a purpose. You, God has a plan for you. It ain't over. It, doesn't, it is not hopeless. As long as you're alive, it is not hopeless. God can turn the situation around like this. If you'll trust Him. Amen? So don't you dare quit on us. Now, is being prayerful God's will for you? Yes, it is. Look at the next one. And so what's the next one? The next one's in everything. Now, I don't have a, a because we don't have the screen up there. I don't have a, a clock. So, okay, now I have it right here. <laughs> yeah. Let me take that away. So if I go way over, it's, it's okay. Let, you know, let me know. So notice, the, notice this next one here. Uh, uh, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I love this one. Notice, so be what? Thankful. Be joyful. Be prayerful. Be thankful. Put that in the Amplified for me. Amplified says, thank God. I know, I know the other verses. Can I read it from verse 14, 16? Be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad hearted continually, always. Be unceasing in prayer, praying perseveringly. And thank God in everything. Listen, no matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. This, let's look at some scriptures in this area. Ephesians 5.17 through 20. Go to Ephesians 5.17. So God says, be thankful all the time, right? In every situation. Pastor, how can I be thankful in the midst of what I'm going through? Look, if you're sick, you're not thankful that you're sick. You're thankful that it's an opportunity for God's healing power to work in your body and, and be a testimony of God's healing power working in your body. Amen? You can be thankful. Amen? 
I remember Brother Hagen, he, he met this, he, had, he went to a funeral with this guy. He was a really bad dude. Bad, bad, bad dude. Bad, bad dude. But Brother Hagen would not speak evil of no one. And so anyway, he was just a bad guy in town, <laughs> causing trouble and everything. He passed away. He, he looks over his coffin and, and he looked at him and he says, Wow, he had great teeth, didn't he? <laughs> he could have said some, you know, he's a, he was a bad individual. But he found something to be grateful, thankful. Yeah, he had some great looking teeth. You can always see. It's easy to find the negative in anybody. It's easy to point out faults. It's easy. Amen. You know why? Because I'm going to tell you something. Amen. You're not going to find a perfect church because everybody who's at that other church is messed up and everybody here is also has issues and problems. Right? We're all, de you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We're all de dealing with things. Yes. Amen? So there's no, no such thing as a perfect church. So, but notice though, notice 517. Look at this. It says, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine. In, well, we just told you what the will of the Lord is, didn't we? What was the will of the Lord? We just read it. And do not be drunk with wine, Right? In, in which is dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit, how? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and what? Spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Look at verse 20. Giving thanks, what? Always. Always. Listen. For what? All things, right? Listen. To God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks, what? Always. For all things. So you can have a thankful attitude at all times, no matter what you're facing. Amen? Even in the midst of something that's, that's hard or whatever. Yeah, again, you can get up in the morning. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that you've made. And yeah, I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad in it. And you're turning everything around for the good. In my life, in my family, in my church. Amen? In my job. Come on. Amen. Being thankful. Why? Because it's God's will. Amen. I want, what's God's will, Pastor? Be thankful in what you're going through. Amen. No matter what you're going through. Be thankful. He says, be thankful. Amen? And then Colossians 3, 17. Look at this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says this. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Giving thanks. Notice, whatever you do. Amen. 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 Whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. Amen. Amen. So can you give thanks in what you're doing? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Right? Give, give thanks no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're doing. No, again, it might, not be, it might be a tough thing you need to do. But in the midst of it, you can still give thanks. God's helping you. He's gracing you. You're going to make it. You're going to get through it. Amen? You're going to get through it. But, but God wants you to just keep thanking Him. Thank you, Lord, that, that I'm still righteous. Thank you, Lord, that, I'm gonna, you know, that I'm gonna, you're going to see me through this. Amen? That I'm coming out on top in this situation. Yeah. Amen? So again, be joyful, be prayerful, be thankful. But notice the fourth one. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. And let's read verse uh, 18, I mean 19 through 21. Notice. Do not, uh, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Right? Test all things. Hold fast that which is good. Amen. So notice the first one there. Do not what? Quench the spirit. That, you know, that's an, that's an important one. Let me, let, me sh let me make sure I'm there. Hold on a second. Let's, let, let's look at this in the Amplified. In the Amplified Bible. Notice what it says. Do not quench or suppress or subdue the Holy Spirit. Do not quench, amen, the Spirit. 
Amen? Pastor, what do you mean quench? In other words, if, if God's lighting a fire in you or stirring you up about something, don't stop it. Amen? Don't, don't suppress it. Amen? It's okay. Let, it, let, let God flow through you. Amen? And in others. If somebody's excited about something, don't, don't you know, stop him. Oh, brother, right now you're really excited because you're a new believer. But when you get older, you'll be serious like me. <laughs> right? You'll be a serious Christian like me. Right? Right? No! Don't quench the fire. I'm going to tell you something. When I was a young believer, somebody did that to me. I was gung-ho about witnessing and, and winning souls and everything. And, and I was trying to encourage people to go witness and everything. And one person is like, oh, you know, you, you need to calm, you know, you know, you need to calm down, brother, you know. No! If somebody's excited about Jesus, if somebody's excited about praying, if somebody's excited about serving the Lord, don't, don't throw water in their fire. Amen? You're not the fire department. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. No. Instead, get some more logs and throw it on there. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, youngin. Preach it. Come on. We want to see you burn. <laughs> right? Oh, never, 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 never. If your young people are excited about something and they say, that, man, I learned something in the Word, you go, really? That's awesome. You know, get excited with them. That, if your young person is excited about something they read, you get excited with them. That'll light a fire within them and they'll want to get more involved. But if you're like, yeah, I already know that. Wait till, wait till you know what I know. <laughs> Amen. You'll have like a PhD like me. Call me Dr. Manuel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, <laughs> right? And so, uh, and so, uh, and so. In fact, l look at, look at. Uh, let's keep reading the rest of it, though. Uh, where was I? Oh, I had it up here, but again, my thing just keeps going off. Here it is. And then he says the next one, verse twenty in, in the Amplified. Don't spurn the gifts and utterances of the prophets. Do not depreciate prophetic revelations, nor despise inspired instruction or exhortation or warning. So, in other words, again, you notice, don't despise prophecies whether it's prophetically speaking or whatever. Amen? But, notice the next part says, test all things and hold fast that, what, that which is good. So though, that doesn't mean when somebody doesn't give a prophecy that we shouldn't test it to see if it lines up with the Bible. It's got to line up with the Word. Amen? If somebody comes up to you and says, Thus saith the Lord, you are going to Africa and you are going to go into the jungle and you are... Well, Pastor, that's why I don't want nobody to prophesy against me. What if God tells me to go to Africa? I'm going to tell you something. If God was calling you to go to Africa, as soon as that prophecy came forth, you would have already known in your heart. And you would have, yes! Yes! Confirm me. It would confirm what God was already speaking to your heart. Prophets, especially personal prophecy, will always confirm what God is speaking already to your heart. If what somebody speaks to you, and it's just like, what? Like, what? Going where? I'm supposed to marry who? People have been told that. You know, you're supposed to marry so-and-so. No! Get behind me. <laughs> I'm serious. So when God tells you something, it's going to confirm a desire he's already been. So don't worry. If, you, if God calls you to go to Africa, the desire will be there. And you'll say, yes. Thank you, Lord. You're confirming it. I'm going to Africa. Bye, everybody. Right? Amen. Listen, because when God called me to pastor as a, become a pastor, before the, a, years, a couple of years before, I would say, no way, Jose, I want nothing to do with it. Right. But when the grace came and then the calling came, it was like, oh, I can pastor now. I felt like I can, I can do this now. I had the desire now, when before, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Right. See what I'm saying? Amen? Now, now, and then, and then the, uh, uh, test all things, hold fast that which is good. Let's go to a couple of scriptures real quick. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. And I call this being respectful then to the things of the Spirit. Be respectful, but uh, be watchful, of course. And, and, and that's going to be the last one. But be respectful. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 32. And that's why, you know, notice verse uh, 29 through, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. 
but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Listen, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed with the day of, for the day of redemption. Let all bitter... How can you grieve him? Now, when I'm talking about grieving, doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit leaves. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. When I'm talking about grieving, it's like a parent, you know, when your kids act up and whatever, and it's like, ah, you know, don't, don't speak like that to each other. Amen. Listen, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, clamor is, is loud arguing. I don't cuss, so I have to clamor. Loud clamoring, right? And evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen? Malice? It's like they want, they want something bad to happen to somebody else. That's malice. No. Can Christians act like this? Yes. Verse 32. But be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Are you seeing that? Even as God in Christ for you. And then, for, of course, first, you don't have to turn there. 1 Corinthians 14 1 says, Pursue love. 1 John 4 1 says, Test all things. Test the spirits to see whether they're from God or not. Right. Test the spirits. Amen. To see whether they're from God. And then Philippians 4 8 says about, you know, set your mind on, on good things and what is pure and holy and lovely and just. Keep them set and meditate on those things. Amen? So be respectful. And then the last uh, B attitude is be watchful. And that's verse 22. Abstain from every form of evil. Abstain, what? From every form of evil. Now, put that in the NLT for me, if you can. Abstain from every form of evil. Notice, stay away from every kind of evil. Or the appearance of evil. So as Christians, it's important that we, again, you know, don't go to things that, you know what I'm saying? That can show you in a wrong light and, and so forth. So abstain from every form of evil. Now again, if you relate it to these other scriptures, it could be referring to, if you hear something that doesn't line up with the word, you know, stay away from that, right? You stay away from that. And in fact, that's why Proverbs 4, 25 through 27, I want you to turn there. Proverbs chapter 4, 25 through 27. Notice what the Bible says. This is, this is not just for young people. This is for everybody. Notice, let your eyes look straight ahead. Come on now. How, how do you stay away from all appearance of you? Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. That's what, like I told you, when I was driving down Grand, I was keeping my eyes straight ahead. I don't want to see the billboards with those ladies. Right? <laughs> Keep my eyes straight ahead. Speaking in tongues. <laughs> Next verse. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. In other words, watch where you're going. Watch where you're going. Ponder the path of your feet means you're looking ahead. Where am I going? Amen? Amen. If your problems are cookies, am I, am I migrating too close to the cookie aisle? Watch where you're going. Why? Because it's like magnets. You know, cookies are like magnets. You know, if you get too close, it's like, <laughs> and you start grabbing all the cookies. <laughs> Ponder the path of your feet. Amen? 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 You have a problem drinking, go down, go, watch out, go to a bottle of water. Go down to the bottle of water. <laughs> and listen, let your, all your ways be established. You know what that means? Let your, let your ways be established? You already, I know what I'm going to do today. I made a decision. I'm going to church. Amen. I could stay home. I could go to the party where these guys are partying, or I could go and watch the football game, or I could decide to come to church. That's right. I'm, uh, I already, I'm already planning my day. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to church. Amen. I'm planning my day. I'm going to go over here. Amen. I'm going to avoid that over there because no, I don't want to go there. That's right. Let all your ways be established. If see, if you already have something set up, then you're going to follow along and. You are not, you're going to just, look, you can't be tempted to do something that you're not tempted. Right. Did you get that? Yeah. Right. You can't be tempted to do something you don't think about. Right. You're only tempted to do something that you think about. Yes. Now, bad thoughts can come on you, temptation can come on you, but don't let the devil 
make you feel bad because you thought that bad thought. Amen. Amen. Speak who you are. I am the righteousness of Amen. God in Christ. I, mean, I don't know how many times Joseph Prince talks about this with people that are dealing with bad thoughts or whatever. He just tells them the same thing. Look, just confess who you are. I don't care that those bad thoughts went through my mind. I want to smack her, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And you know what it does? It, it, it lets those emotions go under the word come down and it settles you. Amen? Amen. And then the last verse. Can you give me the last verse, 27? What does the last one say? Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Amen? Don't go on those bunny trails. Amen? Eat at Joe's. You go you know, or you know what I'm saying? Something is, is, is getting you off your course. You already had your way established, but something is drawing you off your course. Amen? Amen. Don't look at the shiny signs of temptation. Right? And then finally, we're almost done with this book. What time is it? 11.35. Okay, we're doing good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Verse 23. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole what? Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love this. This is awesome. Look at your notes. Here's the blessing of Paul. In fact, can you put uh, verse uh, uh, 23 in the CV and the Amplified? Verse 23 and 24 for me. Uh, notice, notice what he's saying here. I love this. Now may the God of peace himself sanct sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things. Who's going to do it? Who's going to set you free from stuff you're going through? It's God. Listen, He's going to separate you from pro. He's going to make you pure and holy and consecrated. Listen, and what else? And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete. Listen, I've read this, I don't know how many times, but the Lord gave me a revelation. What did He say? May your spirit, soul, and body be what? found uh, sound and complete well guess what sound means soundness of body means healing yeah. so God is saying in this verse I've never seen it before but in, in fact put it a CV for me look at CV check this out CV back, back to 23 I pray that God who gives peace will make you completely holy and may your spirit listen so and body be kept healthy. Amen. I never saw that before. I never saw it that way before. Wow. It's God that not only has made you righteous in your spirit, restores your soul, but also brings healing to your body. I, I think we missed it in the church. We missed, look at this. This is, I've never, I just barely got this. This is a fresh revelation from the Lord. Kept healthy and thoughtless until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. Healthy, so healing is God's will for your body as much as the righteousness that you have, as much as restoration to your soul. God wants you healthy, sound, and whole in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. And, and, and here's the great thing. Look at the next verse, verse 24. He who calls you is what? Faithful who also will do it. Come on now. God is faithful to what? Keep your spirit, your soul, and your body sound, whole, healthy, up unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Amen. That is awesome. I love that. I love that. I said I love that. Do you love it? I do. I love it. Amen. I'm loving it. Yes, I'm man. I'm loving it. Amen. So notice in your notes. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming. A sp in, 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 notice you are a spirit, the real you with which you can commune with God. That's the part of you that was born again, your spirit. And you have a what? A soul, a mind, a will, and emotions which, with, with which you commune with people, right? And you live in a body with which you have contact with the natural world. Amen. The five senses and so forth, right? And so notice, your, your, first, your spirit being. And that's why people need to be born again. Because they're going to live forever, somewhere. Because you're a spirit being. God is a spirit and we were made in His image. 
and we are spirit beings. Amen? And then, and then you have a soul, your mind, and you live in this body. But God who called you will what? Do it because He is what? Faithful. And then finally, look at verse 25, the rest of them here. Brethren, pray for us. You know what this shows me? As great as the Apostle Paul was, he was so, so very humble, and he was asking for prayer. Amen. In the midst of all that he's going through, he's asking. That shows humility. A great man of God asked for prayer. Such humility, such a great man of God, but yet such humility. And so, you know, all of us, and I, I, I covet your prayers too. We all need prayer. Amen. Then, then verse 26. Greet all the brethren with the holy kiss. Now that was a cultural thing back then. You know, these used to, in the Middle East, they would kiss, you know, kiss on the cheeks. Yeah. That was just a cultural thing right now. You know, today, I mean, I'm not saying you can't do that today and whatever. The, the emphasis is holy. Whatever you do, whether it's a hug, a greeting, a handshake, it's the motive. What's your motive behind doing it? Amen? Are you, are you hugging somebody to put a sticker in the back like, hit me? <laughs> why, why are you doing what you're doing? Right? Why are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> right? And then, <laughs> it's the motive. And then notice verse 27. Catherine, do you want to tell Pastor Lucy? Yeah, let's start wrapping it up. Verse 27. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. Now notice, Paul is telling you, look, this is not just for you Thessalonians. I want you to get this, this, this Bible, or this, this book, and read it to every holy brother and sister in the Lord. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs to hear this. Especially now the days we're living in. Amen? And then, and, 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 so, and so then the, finally the last verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. 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 So Paul liked ending his letters with the blessing of the grace, his undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor of God being with us. Amen. So look at your notes there. Application. Love your leaders. Love others. Have a joyful, prayerful, and thankful attitude. Because why? This is God's will. And understand that God Himself is faithful to preserve your spirit, your soul, and your body. What? Blameless. Blameless sound. Healthy. Whole. All the way up to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word this morning, Lord God. Thank you for this awesome and mighty book of 1 Thessalonians, Lord God. It is, we are so grateful and so thankful for the things that we're learning, Father, from the book of Thessalonians. It is such a powerful book. And may we continue to get fresh revelation from this book in our lives, Father. For your word is powerful. And, and may we have that expectancy, Lord God, to, to be working while we're waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. So we are so grateful. We're so thankful for the things we're learning and the things that we're going to continue to learn. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.